boys and girls, it's time for our Bible class this week. I hope you're doing well. And, you know, here is Reese. She has her sweater on because it has gotten cold in Montgomery, Alabama. And I hope you're warm where you are now. But I'm going to, Reese is going to say hello. And then I'm going to put her down. And she may, she might stay here. And then again, she might not. Sometimes she goes and hides. But today's lesson, we have the word temptation up here, and the base word in it is tempt. And have you ever been tempted? Have you ever really wanted to do something you really shouldn't do? Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about that. Here's this little girl. And she's looking at those cookies. And maybe it's getting close to lunch. And her mother said, no, you cannot go, Layla, to that cookie jar and get you a cookie. No, no, you can wait till after you eat lunch. Well, maybe her mother leaves the room. And she's there by herself. And she thought, you know, if I go in there... There is a broken cookie right there. If I take a pinch off that broken cookie, my mother will never know. Well, you know what? Layla will know, and God knows. God knows what we think. He knows what we do. Temptation is thinking about doing something that you have been told not to do or is wrong to do, but you want to do it. That's what it is. You really want to do it. It's something you would really like to do, like to have. Well, today's lesson is Jesus' baptism and temptation. Did you know that Jesus was tempted? And we're going to find out about that today in our lesson. So I want you to open up your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 3. And when you see verses up here, you get your Bible and you read along with me. Don't just look up here at the verses up here. You make sure it's in God's Word. Let's go on with the lesson. The memory verse is a great one. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalms 119.11. What it means to hide the word in our heart, you know, to put it in our heart, we just can't take God's word and do like that. No. We have to read God's word. Read it every day of our life so that we can keep it in our mind. This is our heart. And that we might not sin or do things against what God wants us to do. That's what sin is, is when we don't do what God would have us to do. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119 11, a great verse for us to memorize. And that book, that verse came from Psalms, which is in the poetry section of the Old Testament. But we are looking specifically the New Testament and the Gospels. So let's sing and the, the books of the New Testament right now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letters to the Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. I hope you sang those with me. And don't forget to sing the Old Testament books also.
This story is about John the Baptizer, or John the Baptist, we often call him. And I'm going to ask Mr. Steve, can you help Reese get up onto the... She's having trouble getting up onto uh, where she needs to sit, so... Mr. Steve's going to help her. Now back with the lesson. <laughs> John the Baptizer. John lived in areas where there were no people. He lived in a deserted place. We often say desert, and not necessarily meaning it was like the des desert we might see where there's cactus and all those things types of things, but this is a place where there's not any people. And he wore leather belts and clothes made of camel's hair. And he ate honey and locusts. Now, I might like to eat that honey, but I'm sorry. I just cannot. Oh, I just, I am so glad I don't have to eat locusts. I know they might be kind of crunchy and they may be kind of tasty, but I just don't want to eat those. Do you boys and girls, would you eat a locust like that, like John the Baptist did? Well, what we're saying is John the Baptist lived a very simple life. And people would go out to that deserted area and hear him preach by the Jordan. And he would baptize people there. We learned that last, last week. Well, John started preaching, and the reason he started preaching was to tell people about Jesus and to tell them that the Messiah was soon to be here and that they were to repent, which means to turn from their sin. If they are doing what's wrong, lying, cheating, they're going to say I'm sorry to whoever they were lying and cheating, and then... They're going to pray to God to forgive them, and they're going to turn away from their sin and do what's right. And then they are baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And he told them that Messiah, Jesus, was coming as soon. He was preparing the way for Jesus. Do you remember that the prophet Isaiah spoke about, about John coming to prepare the way? And he compared him to Elijah. He had the spirit like Elijah. And remember those hills he was going to make flat, those valleys he was going to bring up. He was going to make the path easy for Jesus to teach the people. He was going to prepare the people so the people would be ready to listen to Jesus. John the baptizer was the last prophet or special messenger of God to tell the Jews the Messiah, Jesus, was coming. So if you wanted to know what a prophet was, he's a messenger of God. Then Jesus came from Galilee. You remember Nazareth was in Galilee. We don't know if he came from Nazareth, but he did come from the big area of Galilee to John at the Jordan River. And he was wanting John to baptize him. Well, John tried to prevent him, and he said, you know, I, I don't need to baptize you. You need to baptize me. But Jesus said, he wanted him to baptize Jesus himself. Baptize is not to sprinkle. It's not to pour something on your head. It is to be immersed. That's what the word baptize means, to put completely under the water. So if you are baptized, you are to be buried in that water. Here is the Jordan River. Today it travels north to south for 156 miles. It's a long river. And here it is on the map. 
There's the Sea of Galilee. Galilee is around in here, the Jordan River. And remember, uh, John was baptizing around by the Jordan River. But Jesus answered him when he said, you know, I have need that you baptize me. Me, I, I shouldn't be baptizing you because you know what? Did Jesus have any sins? No, he didn't have any sins. So what is bap when you are baptized, why do you why do you get baptized? It's for forgiveness of sins. So your sins will be washed away. Well, Jesus had no sins. Well then why was he baptized? He said, Permit it to be so, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, then John allowed him. He was John baptized Jesus. Now fulfill all righteousness. Now righteousness is right doing. Fulfill all right doing. Now why would Jesus be baptized fulfilling all right doing? I want to say this. God expected all people who want forgiveness of sins to be baptized. Jesus wanted to do, obey God in every sense of the word. So if he and Jesus wanted us to be baptized, so he wanted to show us the way. We are to pattern our life after Jesus. We are to walk in the steps of Jesus. So if we are to walk in the steps of Jesus and be like Jesus, Jesus wanted to show us the way. So it makes perfectly good sense that Jesus wanted to be baptized to show us the pattern show us the way we should be and what we should do then after Jesus came up out of the water after John baptized him something really incredible happened he came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of, of God descending like a dove. Now, it doesn't say it was a dove, but it had the appearance like a dove. And it alighting on Jesus. It came down on Jesus. And suddenly, a loud voice came from heaven saying, This is my Beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Okay, let me tell you this. If it pleases God for his Son, who had no sin, to be baptized, do you think it pleases God for when we are old enough that we too will be baptized? And then... You know, he will be pleased with us as he was pleased with Jesus. So I think that he was a showing us an example. The way we should, what we should do. We should all be baptized when we are old enough. After his baptism, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the devil, the same word is Satan. He was by himself for 40 days and nights without any food. Okay, a month is about 28 to 31 days. A month without eating? Boys and girls, some of us can't go a day without eating. Some of us have to have trouble going two or three hours without eating. We get hungry, don't we? Can you imagine 
going over a month, 40 days without food? Can you imagine how hungry and weak you would be? Wilderness here is a word, a desert or forest area where there are no people. It's where there's no people. Now, there's no people, but there are animals out there, wild animals out there. Now, it would be terrible to be without food, but I wouldn't be too uh, comfortable with all those wild out animals out there either. Then he was tempted, tempted by the devil or Satan. That's when the try someone is trying to persuade you to do something or say something that is wrong. Now when the tempter came to him or the devil or Satan, he said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made into bread. Matthew 4, 3. Because Satan knew that Jesus had power. He had power to do anything he wanted. He could make those stones into bread very easily. All he had to do was say. And then he could take that and eat it. Now, boys and girls, you think, well, what would be wrong with that? Well, at this point, he would be giving in to what the devil wanted him to do. And he did not want to do that. So he answered him, it is written, Jesus knew the Bible. He knew the scriptures. And he said, from the old law, see, still under the old law at this time, Jesus hasn't died on the cross. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. He said, you know, I don't live for just the bread of, or the food. I live to serve God and to obey God. And that's what he wanted to do. Well, the devil wasn't finished with him. He took him to that holy city, which is Jerusalem, and he set them on, on the pinnacle of the temple, which is the highest point of the temple. Now, I don't like high places, boys and girls. I'm kind of tall, but and I, I don't even like being this tall. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Oh, why would anybody want to do that? But see, he's tempting him by saying this. For it is written, even Satan use God's word to twist it, to try to trick Jesus. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Matthew 4, 5. Now, boys and girls, he's saying, God's not going to let you hurt yourself. He won't let that happen to you. So why don't you throw yourself down? Well, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, It is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Matthew 4, 7. Every time Jesus said it is written, you know what? He knew God's word. He had hidden it in his heart. And that's what we must do. Then, last temptation. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and he showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I'll give you if you will just fall down and worship me. Now this one I don't understand because God owns everything. 
how could even say that all these things I will give you? Jesus had access to everything if he wanted to. He came to this earth and lived a poor carpenter because he wanted to. Because he wanted to save us from our sins. And here he said to the devil, to Satan, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Matthew 4.10 He said that directly from the Ten Commandments. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. They took care of him. That's what ministered. They took care of him, gave him what he needed physically. And this is in Matthew 4.11. So Jesus was baptized to show us the way. He even was tempted in all points. Just like we are tempted, yet without sin. How did he do it and not sin? Every time it is written. He so hungry. He was so hungry. He could turn those stones into bread. But Jesus told the devil no and said, it is written. Then he said, took him to the highest point of the temple, the pinnacle of the temple, and he told him to throw himself down because the angels would pick, would pick him up and not let him hurt himself. Well, Jesus said, no, it is written every time. When he told him that he would give him all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus said no to that. Remember, God's word is going to keep us away from temp the temptation to sin. If we want to stay away from sin and do what's right, every day we put this in our mind, in our heart. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119.11, a great verse for us to say and do every day. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. Resist. What does resist mean? Keep yourself away from. Say no to it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. So, we're just going to resist the devil and say no to cheating. We're going to say no to bullying. We're going to say no to smoking and drugs and alcohol. We're going to say no to bad, ugly words. We're going to say no to all those things. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great week. I hope you're able to come and worship with us Sunday morning at Eastern Meadows at 915. I hope to see you there. Bye, boys and girls.